Hello and welcome to the lecture series on Railways, Harbour, Tunnelling and Airport for the subject code 18CV645, Module 5, Session 4, Runway and Taxiway Markings. So in this session, we are going to discuss about uh, different types of marking and lighting has been concerned. So this session is only dedicated to the markings has been concerned. So as we know that uh, whatever the marking or lighting has been uh, taken into account, so they are going to be called as a visual aid. So visual aids are nothing but they are the operators which are used to support or to help the pilot uh, in sighting the various features of an airport. So as we know that pilot need visual aids during the landing or a takeoff operation. So in such a case that we are going to be having a runway threshold, runway edges, center line. So it seems to be essential for the uh, essential features for the ease of takeoff and landing for, with respect to clear visibility. So why do we need this? Because as we know that for the safer operation of uh, the aircraft. So whenever we are going to be having the visibility criteria. So we are going to be having a uh, two types of a visual aid. So I just I will write it here. So visual aids are going to be of a two type. One is going to be the marking and next is going to be the lighting. So whenever we are going to be having the visual aids it composes of uh, two things. One is a marking and lighting. So as we know that markings are going to be uh, seen in the night or when we are going to be ha uh, sorry markings are going to be uh, seen in the morning or when we are going to be having a clear uh, sunny uh, day or when we are going to be having a proper visibility. Suppose if you want the same uh, runway is going to be used at a night so markings are going to be uh, somewhat uh, not visible at a particular height hence we need to go for a lighting for the proper operation or proper coordination with respect to component of the runways. So that is what the visual aids are going to be classified into three type. One is going to be the indicators and the signaling devices. Next is the airport marking and airport lighting. So these are going to be clubbed together called as an visual aids. So moving on to the first one indicators and signaling device. So indicators and signaling devices are always going to be used with respect to indicate the wind direction and also the landing indicator. So these two are going to be the indicator signal devices it is going to be installed in an airport. So moving on to the airport marking. So markings are refers to the signs which is going to be uh, in a different colors for the guidance purpose has been concerned. So these markings are done to highlight the various features of each of the element with respect to the runway or the taxiway. So it is going to be helpful for the uh, display of the marking with respect to the three priorities has been concerned or uh, the run runways are going to be given if the first precision approach of the runway secondly or the second it is going to indicate a non-precision approach and the third is going to be non-instrumental runway. So wherever the uh, marking is to be done on the uh, runway, so always the runway markings are going to be done in a white color. So try to observe, so whatever the marking we are going to be do on the runway, so it is on the white color. So because that um, the conspicuity of a uh, white marking can be improved uh, by uh, outlining them in black color. So that whenever we are going to be having an intersection of two runway or uh, the marking is to be done uh, with a more important runway. So that shall be displayed in the marking. So apart from the uh, runway where it is going to be intercepted. So moving to the next type of a marking are the visual aids has been concerned. So that is going to be the runway and a taxiway marking. So in order to aid the pilot for a proper guiding of an aircraft on the runway and taxiway. So payments are going to be marked with uh, some lines and a number for easy identification. So it is going to benefit primarily during the day and at dusk. So that is the importance or the why we are going to be having a marking on the runway and taxiway. Similarly, we are going to be having a runway designator. So runway designator at the end of each of the runway we are going to be marked with a certain number. So those numbers going to indicate the runway designation 
so usually uh, it is going to be uh, as I said it in the windows diagram analysis or the runway has been concerned. So, which indicates approximate magnetic of the runway when it is measured with the north of the magnet. So, that is for ease of uh, landing and takeoff at a higher altitude to align the aircraft for this purpose. So, apart from that one we are going to be having a different types of marking on the runway. So, moving on to the next type it is going to be runway threshold marking. So, runway threshold marking is going to be an identification for the pilot to begin the runway. So, that is going to be safe uh, and it is going to be available for the landing. So, that is going to be the threshold marking has been concerned. Next is going to be the center line marking. So, runway center line marking is going to be in a white color which is located exactly on the center of the runway. So, it is going to be uniformly spaced stripes and gaps. So, that is the center line marking. So, upon which the pilot is going to align the nose gear for the proper landing. So, next is going to be the aiming point. So, aiming points are going to be placed on the runway uh, at least uh, some 4000 feet in length to provide or to give the enhancement for the visual guidance for the landing of an uh, aircraft has been concerned. Next is going to be the touchdown zone marking. So, the runway touchdown zone markings are going to be white in color. It consists of a group of uh, 1, 2 or a 3 rectangular bars uh, symmetrically which is going to be arranged in uh, pairs so that uh, it is going to be about in the run, uh, runway center line. Next is going to be the side stripes. So, runway side stripes consist of a continuous white line along each of the runway in order to provide the contrast with the surrounding terrain so that or it has going to have a delineate the edge of uh, full strength pavement. So, that is going to be the edge. Next is going to be the blast uh, pad marking. Uh, in order to prevent the erosion of a soil, uh, many of the airports are going to be provided with a blast uh, uh, pad which is going to be adjacent to the end of uh, runway has been concerned. Next is the uh, center line and edge marking. So, as we know that uh, both at the center line for the taxiway is going to be marked with a single and continuous uh, 6 inch yellow line. So, that is going to be center line and edge marking has been concerned. Next type of marking is going to be taxiway hold marking. So, for this uh, taxiway intersection where there is an operational need to hold an aircraft a dashed yellow line is going to be placed perpendicular and also across the center line of the both the taxiway. So, those are going to be called as taxi hold marking or taxiway hold marking. Similarly, uh, next is going to be a closed runway and taxi marking. Whenever the runways are going to be or the taxiways are going to be closed temporarily or it is going to be uh, permanently. So, then the, for they are going to be marked with the yellow crosses uh, at the place uh, so that the traffics are not going to be used this one. Say for example, uh, this is going to be uh, say a runway or a taxiway on the edge of the uh, runway or a taxiway a cross mark with a yellow color is going to be found. So, that is going to be called as an closed runway or taxiway marking. So, as we are talking about uh, different types of markings, so markings are nothing but using a different colors of a paint as a visual aid. Similarly, if you are going to be using uh, for a night or poor visibility criteria has been concerned, uh, lightings are going to be provided. So, as I said uh, during night time or in the poor weather condition for the proper uh, uh, operation. So, whatever the uh, colors we are going to be using it, so they are going to be once again having a different colors to reduce um, uh, what we say uh, to reduce the or to minimize uh, the chances of accident. So, these are all uh, different types of uh, lighting has been concerned. Uh, just I will uh, read a few of them because there are uh, uh, so many types of lights we are been using in an uh, airport. Uh, first one is going to be emergency light uh, then aeronautical uh, beacons, approach lighting then precision approach with respect to uh, category 1, 2 and 3 uh, lighting systems, then runway, uh, sorry, uh, runway uh, lead in lighting system, uh, threshold identification, edge light uh, similarly, threshold and bar lighting, uh, runway center line 
and then uh, runway touchdown lighting etc so similarly we are going to be having a taxiway edge light center line of a taxiway uh, taxiway intersection uh, runway guard light etc apart from that one we are going to be having sign positions uh, with respect to taxiway and runway intersection so these are uh, different types of lighting uh, arrangements we are going to be make it for the poor visibility or during the night operation of an airport so next is going to be the wind direction indicator so as the name in itself indicates that it is going to give the direction of a wind which is blowing over the runway so this is going to be uh, always it is going to be uh, indicator maybe of a wind cone so in the next we will going to show how it is going to be there the wind cone is going to be placed within the segmented of a, a circle together with the landing direction so this helps the pilot to locate the airport and the wind direction indicator so inside of this uh, 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 segmented circle the diameter according to icao is 30 meter so which forms the wind direction which is going to be in the form of a truncated cone so always it must be placed with the uh, distinct places which is going to be away from the building so in order to see a proper or the clearance uh, direction with respect to wind has been concerned so it is been painted with uh, hands of a different colors to strike a better color or the contrast uh, with its background so always we are going to be having uh, white and a red color because of uh, good visibility so this is how we are going to be uh, talking about the wind direction so this is going to be a segmented circle upon which the land uh, landing direction uh, indicator is been provided so after that one there is a traffic indicator then this is going to be the landing of a runway or the strip indicator so this is going to be the wind cone so try to see this this wind cone is going to be here so this is the wind cone so or otherwise we can see the wind cone here so where we are going to be having a alternative uh, red and white color so depending upon the intensity of a flow so if it is going to be the only the first um, color band of a red is going to be flown over then it is going to be having a wind direction or intensity is 1.5 meter per second so suppose if it is going to be the second strip it is a 3 meter per second so if it is a third it is 4.5 or if it is a fourth it is a six meter per second or if it is going to be fully flown then it is going to be having uh, 7.8 uh, meters per second is the wind intensity so that is how we are going to be <coughs> measuring uh, the wind direction and wind cone has been concerned so always try to see how we are going to be placing the wind cone or wind direction so it is always kept away from the main operational area of the runway and taxiway so where we are going to be having a uh, wind tree then it is going to be the wind cone we are been fixing then it is going to be a tetrahedron or it is going to be the landing direction indicator so uh, as i shown in this image uh, that is a, a semi sor a, sorry a segmented circle in which we are been placing a landing directional indicator the same thing i have been given uh, some images where we are been placing this uh, landing direction indicator inside the segmented circle so always it is going to be having a t that is the alphabet t shape which is exactly placed at the center of a circle so prime objective of uh, providing the landing direction indicator is to indicate the direction of the activity of the runway of an airport to the pilot so this is a landing direction indicator so it is going to be having uh, 0.9 meters and length is going to be 3.6 meters so this is how uh, we are going to see the segmented circles here how uh, it has been painted in yellow color okay so this is the exit taxiway and we can see the main runway where we are being positioned the landing direction indicator so next to type just we are going to be talked about the wind direction or the uh, landing direction indicators next we are going to start with the markings so to begin with 
first we are going to be talk about uh, runway designation marking. So, runway designation marking shall be at uh, thresholds of a paved, uh, paved runway. So, these are going to be always uh, uh, marked or designated uh, in which uh, two digit numbers are going to be used. So, it indicates the magnetic azimuth uh, when it is being measured clockwise with respect to the north direction. So, always the marking is going to be given to the nearest to 10, uh, wherever it is going to be uh, where there is no uh, one runway or if it is going to be added to uh, some more uh, parallel runway. So, then we are going to be using some alphabets in the form say if it is two parallel runways are there. So, then the first one is going to be on the left side it is called denoted by L. So, right side is denoted by R. Suppose, if you are going to be having a three parallel runway, so extreme left is a L, central is re represented by C and right side by R. Suppose, if it is going to be uh, four parallel runways are running, so extreme left is a L, uh, next to that one is going to be L of a C and R of a C that is uh, center left or uh, left of the center or right of the center and extreme right is going to be denoted by R. So, the same thing we can uh, see here in this image. So, that is being represented by R and 28. It means, it is a right side of the runway. So, it is going to be having a 280 degree of a north degree. So, similarly, this runway is represented by the L. So, it means, it is going to be the left uh, runway. So, it is also uh, having a orientation of 280 degree north. The same thing uh, is being shown. Suppose, if it is going to be uh, one more runway, if you are going to be having it on the center, then it is going to be represented by C. That is an uh, identification or designation of uh, runway marking has been concerned. So, apart from that one, uh, we are also going to be having a different uh, marking on the uh, runway. See just an example of in this case, it is represented by L. L means it is on the uh, left of a runway. So, 10 is a number, it means it is going to be 100 degree with respect to measure clockwise with respect to north. So, after that one we are going to be having. So, landing zone marking here. So, these are going to be called as a center line. So, after that one we are going to be once again a landing zone marker. So, that is going to be uh, increased depending upon the direction how we are going to be using the runway. So, these thick uh, white colors uh, stripes are going to be called as an edge stripe. So, that is the thing. Next is going to be the runway center line marking. So, as I shown already, so runway uh, the white color line or the solid and it is going to be having some gaps in between. So, that lines are marked exactly on the center of a runway. So, those are going to be called as an, a center line of the runway. So, this is going to be provided with a length not less than 50 meter or not more than 75 meter in a length. So, each of the stripe is going to be at least equal to the length of a gap which is a 30 meter or whichever is going to be the greater. So, according to ICO recommendation that so, based on the precision of a approach on the category of an airport or the landing or a runway. So, category 1 and 3 should have a minimum width of strip is 0.9 meter. Similarly, for non-precision approach uh, with code number 3 or uh, 4, the width of stri uh, stripes should be of a 0.45. Similarly, for non-precision approach of a runway with code number 1 and uh, non-instrumental runway, width of stripe should be 0.3 meters. So, in this image uh, we can see the how the thresholds are being marked that is a white color solid line it is having a number of stripes uh, with a clear gapping in between. So, it is being marked on the either side in equal number uh, of the runway. So, wherever we are going to be seeing uh, there is a R that is a right side of runway. So, 09 is going to be designation number. So, that is going to be uh, numbers of white stripes it is been there on the adjacent to the runway. Uh, center line is called as in a touch zone join uh, or uh, next it is going to be a fixed marking uh, center line marking or sometimes we are also having edge markings. 
Next is going to be the threshold marking. So, this portion we have been talking now that is a threshold marking. So, threshold marking may be defined as a place or a point of uh, cantering. So, it is a entry of a uh, edge of the runway. So, obviously, uh, as we look at this image, it is going to be entry of the runway. So, location and application uh, threshold marking is going to be made at uh, thresholds of a paved runway. Thresholds markings is going to be applicable for non instrument runway with a coding of a 3 or a 4, uh, runway in uh, international commercial airports. Characteristics of uh, this is going to be it shall consist of a pattern of uh, longitudinal uh, stripes. So, these uh, stripes shall be of a uniform dimension and disposed symmetrically about the center line of the runway. So, this number depends upon width of runway. Say for example, uh, as per our standard that is if it is a international airport, uh, it is going to be 45 meter, then number of stripes is going to be 12 in number. So, that is how uh, thresholds are going to be getting marked equally spaced with the uh, edge of the runway has been concerned. So, this is how uh, uh, runway designation, uh, center line and threshold markings are going to be provided. So, try to observe the image carefully. So, these are going to be called as a threshold line. So, it is going to be marked perfectly with uh, 30 mm thick color uh, having a 6 mm thick. Then for each of the thing we are going to be having uh, based on uh, precision of uh, category 1 and 2 that is going to be runway center line. So, that is going to be having some uh, 20 meter in a gap then 30 meter in a gap. So, likewise we are going to be marking the precision for the approach of the runway. So, if it is going to be in the case of a parallel runway has been concerned. So, this is how the marking is going to be done. So, uh, whenever we are going to be having a optional uh, pattern as so we can mark the runway designation like this. So, that is with respect to uh, runway designation center line and threshold marking has been concerned. So, apart from that one we are having a, a displaced a threshold marking. So, displaced threshold marking uh, why we are going to be providing uh, reasons for this one is going to be there may be a small obstruction near the uh, runway entrance. So, in the direction of uh, landing. So, in such eventualities uh, aircraft may be damaged in case of uh, undershoot. So, therefore, uh, threshold markings are going to be displayed. So, this is uh, a standard pattern of uh, marking the thresholds here. So, this is a strip where we are going to be having the threshold for uh, to be uh, displaced for threshold and the runway extremities. So, transfer strides or strips is going to be around 1.8 meters and uh, it has to be marked from the edge uh, of uh, threshold is going to be starting a center line from 30 meters. So, next is going to be the permanent and uh, temporary displacement. When a runway threshold is uh, permanently displaced, uh, arrows shall be provided in the portion of a runway. When a runway threshold is uh, temporarily displaced, threshold uh, shall be uh, obscured uh, except to runway center line marking. Center line marking also shall be converted to arrows. So, next is going to be the aim point marking. So, it is a point to which uh, aircrafts are going to be directed to a land. So, location is going to be at each of the approach end of a non instrumental runway with a code of uh, having a number 3 or a 4, instrument runway with a code number 1. So, it, sh uh, it shall not be closer to threshold. So, this is the table uh, where we are been having a, a location and a dimension of a aiming point marking. So, according to ICO standards has been concerned. So, first one is going to be distance from a threshold to the beginning of a marking. So, whenever we are going to be having a landing distance available is going to be less than 800 meter. So, it should be of a 150 meter. Similarly, from uh, 800 to 1200 meter it is a 250 meter etcetera. Uh, similarly, uh, length of stripe is going to be 30 to 45 meter. So, suppose if it is going to be uh, landing distance is 1200 to 2400 meter, it is going to be 45 to 60 meter. Then width of stripe is going to be 4 meter or 6 meter according to the landing distance which is available 
uh, then with respect to aiming point has been concerned. Next is going to be the lateral spacing between the inner side of the stripe is going to be 6 meter or a 9 meter depending upon the length of the landing available. So, next is going to be the uh, touchdown uh, zone marking. So, touchdown zone marking uh, may be defined as an area uh, within which uh, aircraft have to uh, touch the surface on the runway. So, it consists of a pair of uh, rectangular markings. They are symmetrically disposed about the runway center line. So, number of uh, such pairs are going to be related to the landing distance available. The marking shall not be uh, less than uh, 22.5 meter long. The minimum width of the spacing for any pattern shall be 1 to 8 meter and 1.5 meter respectively. So, depending upon the uh, uh, landing distance available for the distance between the threshold, suppose if it is going to be less than 900 meter, so one pair of a marking has to be taken. Suppose if it is going to be uh, greater than 2400 meter, six pairs of marking has to be uh, written on the other side of the runway. So, those are going to be called as a touchdown marking. So, this is how the touchdown markings are going to be given with respect to aiming point and etcetera. So, this is the center line. So, these are going to be the pair of lines of a solid line we are been providing it. Next is going to be the touchdown marking. So, we can see here. So, this is the aiming point that is a solid line, thick color line. Uh, just in a uh, one on the either side is going to be provided. So, that is going to be called as an aiming point. So, next is going to be a runway side uh, strips marking uh, location. It consists of a two stripes. Uh, they are marked on each uh, side of the runway in such a way that outer edge of the stripe is approximately on uh, outer edge of the runway. However, uh, when the width of runway is greater than 60 meter, stripes shall be marked at a 30 meter from the runway center line. So, purpose is to provide the contrast among the runway edge and the shoulder with respect to the surrounding terrain. The width of runway is going to be less than 30 meter, then the width of uh, uh, stripes should be greater than equal to 0.45. Suppose, if the width of runway is greater than 30 meter, then width of uh, stripes should be greater than equal to 0.9 meters. Next is going to be the runway shoulder marking. The runway shoulder markings are going to be with a diagonal line uh, which is going to be marked. So, taxiway holding apron and shoulders are always marked with the lines which is perpendicular direction to the travel of aircraft. So, this is how we can see if yes, this is going to be the runway, this is the center line. Then we are going to be having a solid color line or painting. So, with respect to the runway shoulder. So, next one is going to be the blast pad. So, similarly it is been extended over the holding apron and also the taxiway. So, this is how the shoulder marking is going to be done in the diagonal lining. Next is going to be the taxiway marking. So, as we know that uh, taxiway is also going to be important to take away the aircraft from the uh, busy runway to our uh, apron. Hence, uh, taxiway marking is also going to be important. So, whenever we are coming across with the taxiway, all the taxiway markings are going to be done in yellow color. So, try to remember if it is in the case of a runway, it is going to be white color. Suppose, if it is a taxiway, it is going to be yellow color. The center line of the taxiway is going to be marked with a single stripe, which is going to be having a 15 centimeter width. So, this is center line normally terminate at the runway edge except in the case of exit taxiway. A holding point marker should be painted at all the intersection of the paved taxiway and runway. The holding position should be at least 30 meter from the edge of the runway as been concerned. So, try to see here. So, it should be having a solid line. So, that is going to be called threshold marking from the runway and this is the center line of the taxiway. So, now, uh, this uh, picture is somewhat clear and we can give the idea how the painting is going to be done or the marking is going to be done. So, wherever we are going to be come across the runway, so it is going to be having a white color line, solid line. So, this is the aiming or touch, uh, touchdown, uh, threshold, runway orientation, center line, aiming point. Then this is going to be once again the threshold marking has been concerned. 
so this is the center line of the runway towards the taxiway so try to see the here whenever we start with uh, taxiway the color is going to be using is yellow color so at the end we are going to be having the shoulder of the taxiway which is going to be having a color of a yellow co thick color line so once again at the center we are going to be having uh, yellow color solid line so this is going to give you the direction of marking of the exit taxiway or the taxiway so similarly this is going to be the threshold marking or the vehicle line so it is going to be marked perfectly for the taxiway and runway has been concerned so this is how in the real image we can see this is the stopway then this is the uh, orientation center line uh, edge marking of the runway this is also center line the aiming point so after that one this is taxiway end markings the center line marking so we can see the orientation of the other runway or the taxiway numbering so next is going to be the aircraft stand marking so location and application of a uh, aircraft stand markings are made in a pewed apron purpose is to designate the parking position characteristics are going to be uh, stand identification uh, turn bar turning line alignment bar uh, stop line and a lead out line and height of this uh, uh, aircraft stand marking is to give the identification and should be good readability uh, for the pilot when he sit in a cockpit in an aircraft so apart from that one we are also going to have a apron uh, safety line location and its application so this is going to be provided on the paved apron uh, which is required by parking the configuration and ground facilities we are been providing it objective of this is to have the safety line uh, it needs to segregate the ground vehicle and other aircraft serving vehicle from the aircraft characteristics of this line is going to be once again a continuous line in length and at least 10 centimeters in a width so element of uh, apron safety lines are going to be uh, wing tip clearance lines and uh, uh, service road boundaries lines are also going to be provided and next is going to be a road holding position marking the road holding position marking shall be provided across the road and at all the road entrances towards the runways so once again this characteristics of uh, marking shall be in accordance with the local road uh, traffic regulations has been concerned so with this note uh, we are going to be coming to end of this session so in this session uh, we had uh, discussed about the various type of a marking and uh, importance of uh, marking and its color and its position and its dimension to prepare this uh, session we had used the same standard reference textbook along with the web reference thank you